So in this tutorial we're going to look at layering up loops from other loops and taking small portions of them to really create your own kind of composite loops and customize them so that they don't sound the same as every other sample pack etc. So we're just going to refresh our memory of what we've playing with so far um, and the kick and percussion groove that's already in there before we start layering up and looking into the loops. So that as the main percussion loop is already quite good, but it can really be enhanced further by the layering up and the use of extra additional loops. So now let's delve into these sort of bog standard Apple loops that we've got in drags here. Now this is the same principle whether you use WAVs or dot rexes or Apple loops or apes or anything. It's not really important where the loops come from, but we'll have a little look at how to really kind of customize them. But first of all, we need to familiarize ourselves with what is in the original loop. And then from that, we can kind of look and delve into and find smaller internal loops or internal grooves within the, within the loop. So let's have a little listen to this. And you can move around smaller kind of loop points within there to try and chop and edit out some internal grooves from the loop. So we're not using the whole thing in its original guys, but just taking a tiny segment like that one there and customize our own rhythms. But let's just have a little listen to what I've resequenced with the audio here. So we can hear that that's quite different already. And if we listen to this one, we can see that this is quite different again. And we can hear there that there's some quite different things in there. So that segment there has actually been reversed and time compressed as well. So I had to bounce out the loop as a new audio file which is quite a good piece of advice to do for anyone because you can only do destructive editing to audio files that have that in their permission so here sometimes some of the options like reverse and change the game etc are grayed out in things like apple loops so with this new uh, wave file that i've created you're able to go in and, and do some of those things So on this particular loop here, I've taken a segment and I've pitch shifted it down a couple of semitones and I've had to rebounce that section and re-edit it in time with the pitch shifting on because it actually causes quite a bit of latency and disturbs the rhythm. So that's been bounced out already and resequenced at the new pitch, ready for the further effects processing on that side there. So moving on to the next loop here the original and then the edited version and there you can hear that I've chopped up a smaller sub sub loop or sub group of the, the uh, loop and one of those sections there has just been reversed which really creates quite a great sound for that particular kind of hybrid loop so this one hasn't really had much done to it, it's just a tiny section of it that has again been reversed. So I'm using a tiny segment of that to really get that reverse focal. So this loop doesn't have actually anything changed to it in the, in the second half there. That's going to be part of our hybrid loop, that's going to come all with the effects processing. So as we can hear, that's exactly the same at the moment, but with the further processing, that will become quite unrecognisable later on. And this final kind of club loop, have listened to that. And then the sort of resequence version is just being chopped up and re-edited. And again, that's quite strong at the moment, but that will sound very different once the final processing has been done and some of those edit parts have been used more effectively. So now let's move on to auditioning each one and actually processing each individual composite loop. So we're only going to play the, the edited versions in here and we're going to have a listen to them with the effects processors on and decide a way 
of using it. So to start off, I've put a bit crusher on to drive and the uh, down sample change a little bit, as well as the wet dry mix. So we get a, not the full bit crush version and not the kind of clean version, but a nice little hybrid to get the character out of that. Next, we've got some stereo delay to really change up the sort of rhythmical quality of that because it's quite static at the moment. So with some bouncing delays, that's going to sound really good. Just some quite quick techniques on there, a bit of feedback. Next, we're just going to change the tone just slightly with the overdrive and just make that a touch more aggressive. And finally, we're going to add in some sidechain compression to really make that pump, all those delays pump with the kick drum and pump with the groove of the actual uh, rest of the beat. So that might sound quite strange on its own there. So we're just going to solo the kick drum as well. And now you can hear that sits in and works much better. If you listen to it without the kick drum and without the sidechain compression, it sounds a bit alien, a bit strange, but with that back in, that's sounding really nice. So next we're going to look at this loop. We've already got some automation built in there, so you can see that process of turning around already uh, with that automation for the frequency of the ring modulator. But that will come in at the sort of end of the signal chain. So the first thing we've got there is a bit of EQ to kind of just get rid of some of the low end of that loop. We're going to exacerbate that kind of thinner percussive sound by overdriving it a touch and then finally add in this ring modulation to really change the frequency and pitch as that loop plays on and that we can hear now it sounds very very different from the original and there that is pretty unrecognizable from the original loop so moving on to this pitched pitch shifted loop got some EQ to really thin out the bottom end and make sure it doesn't interfere with the kick etc some sort of extreme levels of overdrive and distortion to really really change the sound and really really make that kind of scream and um, got some sort of nice delay in there as well nice bit of echo to change up the pace a bit some sidechain compression as well to really make that kind of pump especially with the delays if you put that sidechain compression in after delays that really works to pump it and finally, a bit of EQ to thin out the bottom because some of that distortion plugin has added in some extra low end there. We just want to make sure that's nipped out at the very end of the signal chain. So again, we can hear that it's. So again, we can hear that's quite different from its original. Next, we've got some automation already added in, some sort of auto wah. That's some automation, you see the depth of that sort of wah wah pedal being moved. And that's already in there. So when we turn that on, you can hear that nice sort of filtering sweeps. And then just a nice subtle bit of delay, not too, not too much delay, just to add some rhythmic interest to that as again. And that works really nicely with that reverse sample in there as well. So now we're just going to use this tiny little reverse sound and that reverse vocal is what we're really going to focus in on. So we're going to cut the bass out of the beats, add in a bit of high shelf EQ to brighten it up so when it goes through the reverb it'll be have a much brighter tone and that brightness will get pulled through that reverb as well. So next we're going to use a typical kind of top loop technique. We're going to roll off the bass up to about 2k just under to really thin that out and get rid of all the beats and stuff so you just get that high end in there sounds really nice and then we're just going to add in some delay with a nice dotted rhythm which because the rhythms are quite straight and quite regular those delays are really going to drive and push that on that sounds really good there And then finally, we're going to just work through removing a bit of bass and a bit of treble out of that. Just use that kind of mid, sort of funky, funky mid sounds of that percussion loop. And add a bit of overdrive to change the tone slightly. Really pull that up and 
drive it. We could take the uh, tail off with that EQ there, but with that high shelf remove there, we can make sure that that's not too bright once it's been through the overdrive as well. It's not going to make too many harmonics in the high end. So now finally we're going to use the harsh effect and offset one speaker against another one by a sort of almost imperceptible amount rhythmically, but by delaying these channels against one another it will create a stereo, pseudo stereo widening. And then with it off and back on you should be able to hear that that feels like it's a much more stereo signal by using that harsh effect there. So now we've processed them all individually, it's time to kind of blend them and mix them together, mixing up the layers, blending them to taste really. So whatever you kind of think is right in terms of level, we'll kind of do fine for that. That's sounding pretty good there at the moment. So um, we'll add a bit of compression because all the tracks are being bust. And we'll just add a bit of soft click distortion and we'll use low threshold, low ratio compression. So we're going to really bring up all the kind of finer detail and more delicate stuff with that. We we'll can use about 5 dB of gain reduction in there. And that should really help kind of gel the loop together and bring it up. And then we're going to use in series after that a bit of sidechain compression as well. So that's sounding pretty good. So the next one here is going to use that kick drum to really help pump the whole groove up together. Just solo that kick and get that playing along with the percussion loop. We should really hear the difference of how all the stuff gels together. tweaks and adjustments as we hear this in context of what it should actually be used like. So those layers there are really kind of working together and you can just mute a few in and out. It's a really good kind of mixing tip and technique to just mute something and think if it's too loud or too overbearing and then pull it back up. So we're just going to bounce out that loop and reintegrate it back into the project. So we're just going to use 16-bit 44.1 and render that out as a new loop. And make sure it's added to the project and then we just drag it back into the arrange page like so. And we'll see how our composite loop sounds with the rest of the groove. So there's the loop there, and let's see if we can mix that back in with the other percussion and the rest of the elements. So I've just changed the volume, resequenced it there, and we'll try and play that back in and see how it sounds. So we're just going to test it and hear it back in context with the rest of the drums. Now that that's muted there, we can hear that makes a real difference to the percussion track as a whole. So 
so this next trick we're going to look at can be done in anything that can really read like a dot rex or any sort of recycle file some way that can basically slice up the loop into transients and be re-triggered from a sampler and we're going to use an EXS24 for this so this is something specific to logic this particular feature but something that can be applied to in, in other uh, samplers and using other equipment so that's just rendered all of those by the transients and sliced it into a MIDI loop there and we'll just play back and we'll see that it sounds exactly the same So we can see that as the same as the audio loop and now we can take advantage of some of the features in the sampler like the filter and the envelopes as well to make it a bit more choppy. So we're going to program in some automation here and get some of these things to change over time. So we'll use the filter to have a low pass filter to just use the low parts of the percussion groove and have those automate so it gets brighter as the time progresses in a kind of exponential curve there and we'll do something similar with the amplitude envelope as well so envelope 2 we're going to just use the decay time and we're just going to increase that so it plays the samples in their full but it's going to start off with not playing the full sample for the full duration of the MIDI note we're just going to have it go up in an exponential curve and play the full loop towards the end of that. So let's give that a little listen. So that sounded pretty good there. And we're just going to use that audio aspect of it as well to create a, a tape stop slowdown effect again that's something unique to logic in there but it can be done with other external plugins as well we'll just remove some of the base of that and have a little listen so that sort of stop effect so that sounded pretty good and we'll just use that there as a kind of fill into the full loop in its sort of unaltered guise so by the time we get to that second section after that tape stop, it would be no longer be filtered or have the amplitude envelopes uh, adjusted. So there you pretty much have it. You can customise your loops in a variety of ways. It can be done with any sort of type of loop. You can find sort of new internal grooves within the loop by changing your loop uh, locators or playback locators and looping over sort of smaller sections to find new internal grooves. It's worth kind of rendering them down to .wav file or to a new file format so you can do some destructive editing, things like reversing, time stretching, time compressing. You can resequence the audio into new grooves by just chopping and pasting and cutting up the audio loops. You should try and apply effects creatively to kind of disguise the original and make uh, changes to the timbres, etc., to give the loops your own kind of custom feel to them. You should try layering up composite loops from other loops, so use four or five to make a, a single new loop. Try adding some sidechain compression to make the loop bounce if it's not kind of working in terms of the groove or if you've got something with a lot of delay on, sometimes those delays and reverbs can wash out the loop a little bit. So try adding some sidechain compression to it to make it bounce a bit more with the drums. Make sure you archive the loops for kind of future hacking up and future resampling and editing. So you build up a library as you do with your kind of drum shots and kick samples, etc. And finally, we looked at how to sort of trying to resample the loops and trigger them from a sampler to take advantage of the new tools within the sampler, things like ADSR envelopes, 
and uh, filter call-offs, etc.